If you're a person of color with diabetes, you may have experienced some weight shame at some point in your life. Weight shaming is a form of discrimination that can lead people to feeling bad about themselves and their bodies. This can be especially harmful for those who are already struggling with their health. Diabetes misdiagnosis is also a problem for people of color. Studies have shown that African Americans and Latinos are more likely to be misdiagnosed with diabetes than Caucasians. This is because symptoms of diabetes can often be mistaken for other conditions like being overweight or having high blood pressure. If you're a person of color with diabetes, it's important to be aware of these risks and make sure you're getting the proper care and treatment. Weight shame is a pervasive issue that often causes individuals to feel self-conscious and unworthy. Unfortunately, these deep-rooted feelings of embarrassment can have greater consequences than the emotional distress they cause. Studies have shown that certain types of weight bias contribute to misdiagnosis of type 2 diabetes, as weight and A1C are sometimes looked at the only determining factors. This is incredibly alarming, as misdiagnoses can have a long-lasting consequence on our health. Even with improved education and awareness campaigns, it's clear that pressure from society continues to be a significant factor in how we perceive ourselves and how our mental and physical health may be affected by this perception. The link between weight shame and diabetes is an important one to understand. The more we can recognize these underlying issues, the better equipped we'll be to create a world full of understanding, acceptance, and care for one another despite body size. So how can weight shame lead to a misdiagnosis of diabetes or a misdiagnosis of diabetes type? Weight shame has long been a factor in how one is treated in a medical setting, and this can be especially detrimental when it comes to diagnosing diabetes. Too often, type 1 diabetes is overlooked when a patient's extra weight could be masking some of the signs and symptoms of the condition. Weight shaming also perpetuates misconceptions about health overall, deters people from seeking medical care, and can lead to a misdiagnosis or incorrect assessment of the type of diabetes being experienced. It's important for clinicians to take an approach that is rooted in understanding, advocacy, and respect when working with patients who are overweight and obese, as well as those who are experiencing complications related to diabetes. Most importantly, all diagnoses should be made with accuracy and integrity. Communities of color are particularly vulnerable to being caught in the dangerous cycle of weight shame and maybe at greater risk for having a diabetes misdiagnosis or going undiagnosed. Empathy is key in understanding the complexities and struggles that many people face when it comes to health and weight. Communities that show compassion and kindness instead of judgment can make a dramatic impact on the overall well-being of those who face discrimination or who feel isolated or embarrassed due to their physical appearance. Showing empathy toward one another requires a delicate balance between understanding, support, and a space for individuals to work through their own unique issues surrounding weight and health. Breaking the cycle of weight shame and diabetes can be difficult, but it's an important journey. And it starts with making sure we prioritize the well-being of individuals. That means removing any stigma or judgmental attitudes that overweight and obese people who are more likely to be misdiagnosed with the wrong type of diabetes might feel in healthcare settings. Understanding how bias can affect a diagnosis is also necessary in order to develop solutions that reduce misdiagnosis rates. Change also needs to come from an overarching cultural shift toward increased body acceptance and respect for larger bodies. This shift needs to focus on encouraging healthy lifestyle choices for achieving health goals that fit individual needs. We must all do our part by unlearning unhealthy diet culture biases and creating an environment where medical professionals feel supported in their approach to respectfully support all individuals regardless of body size. People living with diabetes are sometimes misdiagnosed and often experience weight shame. This can cause further mental health issues that need to be addressed. For those looking to get more help or even to just discover more about their diagnosis, there are plenty of resources out there. Support groups, discussion forums, and educational materials all provide those living with diabetes a safe space for learning and growth. I've been living with diabetes for seven years and I spent four of those years with a misdiagnosis. And when I was first diagnosed, I was 26 years old and I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And I found no shame 
in having a type 2 diabetes misdiagnosis, but as the years went on, I realized that something wasn't working and something wasn't right. And so I had to push and push and push and push to get a doctor to believe me that despite being overweight, that despite having a family history of type 2 diabetes, that I was worth being tested because my age and the treatment that I was receiving was not putting me on a path to better blood glucose. And finally, I went to an understanding and empathetic endocrinologist who said, maybe we don't have all of the puzzle pieces here, and maybe the puzzle doesn't fit together because there's an answer missing and there's a piece missing. And so that empathy and that kindness from my endocrinologist is really what gave me the ability to be confident in asking, can I be tested for antibodies? And when we tested, I was positive. And my C-peptide levels, which is the level of insulin in your body, were incredibly low. And so in 2020, I was diagnosed with latent autoimmune diabetes in adults, which is a slow progressing form of type 1 diabetes. Because of my weight and because of the stigma around weight and type 2 diabetes and the assumptions that come with that, I spent so much time being misdiagnosed. I could have developed complications. I could have died from diabetic ketoacidosis from not being on insulin. I could have gotten really sick. And all of that is because of assumptions about my weight. The antibody test for type 1 diabetes is not a difficult test. It is a blood draw. And my original doctor looked at my weight, my A1C, and said, it's type 2 diabetes with no further testing. I'll also say that I often sat in those offices feeling like I was not listened to, ever. Feeling like I had to push and I had to continue to prod and ask questions and advocate for myself and where I didn't get the empathy that I needed and I didn't have someone saying, okay, well maybe let's take a deeper look at this. So I think it's really important that you continue to advocate for yourself and if you are living with diabetes and you feel like maybe you have a misdiagnosis or you feel like something isn't quite right, sometimes you have to push for yourself. And in communities of color, I think that happens more often. There is implicit bias in the medical system. There have been many studies on it. And implicit bias can sometimes keep you from getting the care that you need and that you deserve. So learn ways to fight for yourself, learn ways to stand up and advocate for yourself and make sure that you're getting the care that you deserve. That's it for this video. Be sure to check out some of the other videos in my stigma series. We are talking, you know, today we did weight shame and misdiagnosis. We're also talking about food shaming and the place of cultural foods in a diabetes diet. We'll also be talking about diabetes referenced in pop culture and the idea that people with diabetes do not take care of their health and that's a myth that I absolutely want to destroy. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye!